Hey everyone, welcome back to part 6. The jet is taking shape fast and we're diving into the next key steps. The car body moves into the next station. Outside this machine tightens the two rear slide bolts that were flagged earlier and the unit below secures four rear axle bolts. Another tool locks down four middle crossmember bolts along with four bolts for the rear crossmember. Now, a KUKA robot is fastening the two engine mount bolts. Next, another machine tightens four fuel tank bolts, followed by one bolt on the rear muffler. Finally, two KUKA robots work together to tighten three bolts on each side of the front suspension. Workers then pick up two different expansion nuts. One goes on the inside of the rear body panel, the other into the wheel well. Two more bolts are taken, and an electric torque wrench pre-tightens the fuel tank neck bolts. To finish, an Atlas electronic wrench secures both bolts. Two dust caps are added on the left and right front suspension bolts, and the fuel line is clipped into its bracket. At this point, the chassis support tray separates and the body is fully joined to the chassis. The engine oil level sensor plug is connected, the dust cap on the brake line is removed, and two brake lines are attached and tightened with screws. A special tool installs a half-round nut to fix the muffler heat shield. Next, a set of embedded nuts, two anchors, and the rear axle guard plate are installed. The nuts and seals go into the service holes, the guard plate is mounted under the rear axle, and the anchors lock it in place. The ABS wiring is pulled through a service hole, its clips are tapped in with a rubber mallet, and finally the ABS and wheel speed sensor plugs are connected. Four anchors and a central tunnel shield are mounted under the catalytic converter. Another tool secures them tight. And four more screws lock down the rear axle guard plate. On each side, two screws hold it in place. Three bolts connect the engine to the transmission, tightened with an electronic wrench, since these bolts are at the very bottom and cannot be fastened earlier. A dedicated electronic wrench for brake lines is then used to tighten the connection bolts. This tool alone costs more than a Jetta. After that, the dust cap on the fuel line is removed, and the engine fuel pipe is connected to the tank pipe. A large underbody shield is then mounted with seven screws, one on each side of the car. A smaller shield is added at the back. Moving to the front wheels, dust caps are removed from the brake lines and sensor plugs. The wiring harness clips are fixed into the service holes, the plugs are reconnected and a bracket is installed to secure the brake lines. That same dedicated wrench tightens the connections. Ground wires are also handled here. The nut on the left side frame rail is removed, the transmission ground wire is installed, and the nut is put back on to be tightened at the next station. The charcoal canister is unpacked, scanned into the system, and installed near the right rear wheel, with its fuel pipes connected and one screw tightened. Next, the air conditioning compressor is prepped. Its two bolts and dust caps are removed. Then the low pressure pipe is mounted on the right side and the high pressure pipe on the left. Both are secured with bolts using a power torque wrench.
At the rear, the bumper guide bracket and the antenna for keyless entry are installed, followed by the rear crash beam. Wiring is organized, the antenna is plugged in and two bolts are pre-tightened with a wrench. Later, more bolts will be added and tightened with the electronic tool. The particulate filter pressure sensor is plugged in, the vacuum booster dust cap is removed, and the vacuum pipe is sprayed and connected. Clips are tapped in to hold the wiring in place. The transmission vent pipe is also installed while the starter and alternator wiring is clipped and secured neatly along the engine bay. At this point, the heater hoses are connected to the engine after removing the dust caps. The fuel pump controller and tank sensor cover are installed and wired. A coolant reservoir is mounted, its hoses are connected with spring clips. Finally, the OCU antenna is fixed on the rear crash beam with a nut. The wiring is clipped and the beam bolts are tightened, three on the left and four on the right. That extra bolt on the right is not about saving money, it is because the right side also supports the tow hook. <laughs>